Gabriella Nalvin has written a delightful children's book entitled Athena, The Adventures of a Fearless Dragon. This is a heartwarming story about a little dragon born with her two back feet missing. And during her journey across the country, searching for a new home, she and her brothers learn to work together to survive while strengthening their sibling bond. Athena, The Adventures of a Fearless Dragon is now available on digital platforms. For those of you who are viewing from around the world, from those of you who are listening from around the world, welcome to My Journey with Paula G, where we are juggling this journey called life while we're walking in the gifts and the talents that God has given us. I am your host, Paula G, and I welcome each and every one of you. If this is your first time on the journey, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are returning, welcome back. We are so glad to have you. You know, I always say to y'all, time is precious. It is the one thing that you cannot get back. So for you to think it, not robbery, to spend your time with us is truly, truly appreciated. We thank you so very much. And we thank those who make this journey possible. And that would be our underwriters. For without them, we would not have the opportunity to provide you with quality programming. So we thank our underwriters for my journey with Paula G. And listen, if you've got a business product or service and you're looking for exposure for that business product or service, you may want to consider underwriting opportunities right here on my journey. You can email jerryvoicelive at gmail.com or paul at paulagvoice.com. Put underwriting opportunities in the subject line and we'll be sure to get back to you. And we also want you to stay connected, like, share, subscribe. Paula G Voice across the board. My website, paulagvoice.com, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of it. Paula G Voice. I try to keep it real easy for, for all of you all. So thank you all so much for tuning in today. And before we talk with our guests, I want to take a moment for Paula's perspective. And this comes from my book, My Journey to Lady Wisdom After Midnight. And this comes from chapter, what chapter is it? Chapter three, The Military Journey, where I share a bit of my journey as a military spouse. And what I want to share with you today is the lesson learned, because at, at the end of each chapter, I have a lesson learned. And the lesson learned for this particular chapter is embrace all life experiences. The opportunity to live in another state or country is an opportunity for a greater understanding of the world we live in. This world is so much bigger than our respective zip codes. And, you know, for me, it, it has been having the opportunity to live in different countries, to, to, to experience different cultures. It really does give you a perspective that, y'all, we are not the only ones on this planet. And the way we do things are not necessarily the, there are other ways to do things, I gotta choose my words carefully. There are other ways to do things that we that we need to be open to embracing. There are other cultures and, and, and values. At the end of the day, we all, regardless of where we are on this planet, we all want the same thing, a good life. You know, good, good to be able to get up and go to work every day to provide for our families, to support our families, to love our families, to love ourselves. We all basically want the same thing. We might go about it differently. We might look at things differently. We might value things differently. But at the end of the day, we all desire the same thing. So I hope that encourages you to kind of think and look outside the box and outside your zip code as well. So that is your Paula's perspective for today. Well, we have a guest today. And this young lady is a 13-time world boxing champ, five different classes, She's a motivational speaker. She lives in the DC area. She's from the Carolinas by way of New York City. She is Tori Nelson. Tori, welcome to the journey. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And you know, we were talking a little a little earlier before the show. I just love your energy and I love your spirit. And I want you to share a little bit with the audience about who Tori Nelson is. Who is Tori Nelson? You know, I like to say I'm the three BJ lady, baby, Bible, and boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, I have two beautiful children. I a third. I'm a 13-time world champion, and I love my Lord. 
So that's me. Like, I mean, and now I'm a motivational speaker by God's grace. And I'm about to be inducted October 22nd and that's to the Hall of Fame. Into the Hall. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's roll it back a little because we kind of have to unravel this journey a bit. So we started, we didn't, we, we first started boxing, but we didn't start boxing until the age, I believe it was 29. 29. It's very unheard of to start that late. And, you know, people, I went to, we went out to um, Florida because I'm like the three or four time, um, oh my goodness, the champion for like the amateurs. Mm -hmm. so I've, I had won it so many times and they was just like, Tori, you have to do something for the Golden Gloves champion. So I'm like, okay. So we went out to Florida and this man saw me and he was like, isn't she old to be boxing? You know, he saw she all washed up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now what, uh, 15, no, 16, 17 years later, I hold 13 world title belts and five different weight classes, blessed, and they're going into the Hall of Fame. So, okay, so now, you know, we say, okay, she started boxing at 29. What in the world motivated her to box? Was she in some other sport or martial arts or something before that? What what brought us to this point? Some you, I was fighting when I was born. <laughs> I was, I'm the only girl and the baby of three boys. So yeah, I just wasn't getting paid for it. You, <laughs> now I'm getting paid. So you were, you were, you had training for 29 years. Yes, ma'am. And yes, you decided, you know what, it's time for me to get paid for all this fight. Exactly. And experience. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. I had a whole lot of experience with it. Fight, you know, it, it reminds me of fight, fight and your brothers brought you to the age of 29, fighting professionally and getting paid to do what you had been doing for your entire life. And it reminds me of something that a friend of mine, and I say this sometimes on the show, he used to say that every experience that you have in your life prepares you for that particular moment or oh. season in your life. So all those years you were out there rustling and tussling with your brothers, prepared you for the age of 29 to get out there and do that professionally because you had you had the training already yes ma'am already <laughs> i'm telling you shoot i should have had them as my coaches there you go <laughs> <laughs> so 13 titles five how do how do we wind up in five different because lady girls would not want to fight me so in order for me to fight i have to switch you know everybody say oh i'm a boxer but if they don't fight in a year, they're fine. I'm, I wasn't like that. I love the sport. So I would have to go up and down and wait just to get a fight. Oh, gosh. Yes, ma'am. So that, that, that in itself had to be... A lot. A lot and a challenge because you consciously, I, okay, in order to fight, I got to go up. In order to fight, I got to go down. And on top of training and mentally preparing. Yes, ma'am. You know, and a lot of people say... Well, what was the hardest for you, losing weight or gaining? Because most people losing weight was hard for them. Mm -hmm. Losing weight was very easy for me. The hard part for me was gaining the, weight. the weight. Because you can eat, what, 3,000, 5,000 calories a day. But when you get in that gym and you push it, grinding, all those calories are gone. Oh. And then you go through the night sweats and the, mm -hmm. then you down like your mind play tricks on you. You go to like do a little, not depression, but mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not feeling yourself and because you can't get that weight up and then you got the weight up the fight on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, people just do not understand. They just see you with the finished product. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the mental part of the journey yeah. on top of the physical part. Exactly. The mental part of the journey. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, we're in a society where, you know, we see people on social media, on television, wherever we see them, you know, in their glory of whatever it is they're doing. And, you know, you think, oh, they just woke up one day in the midst of that and they're out there and, and they don't realize the journey and what it took to get to that point. There's a lot of work and lonely nights and hard work and all that kind of stuff behind the scenes. So nothing 
that appears easy is easy. And you know, my grandma used to always tell me, you don't want a microwave life. If it's easy, it ain't gonna last. It's not gonna last. It's not no gonna man. last. So, you know, grandma had some wisdom back then. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> she had some wisdom. So, you know, we, we fought for a number of years, five different classes, 13 time world boxing champ, and now nominated for the Hall of Fame. Tell us a bit about how we've gotten to that point of being nominated. You know, but God, that's all I can say. Yeah. I've traveled. Um, I went all overseas fighting. I fought in the country. I fought. But I wasn't one of those fighters that was out there getting the publicity. And Because I was a mother. I was a single mother. I didn't have time for that. You know, mm-hmm. so it was um, by God's grace. Next thing I know, I got a phone call and I had, my team was amazing. My team was very amazing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so you just said something real quick. I want to hit the pause button in the midst of being a fighter. We're having a baby. I have, I had two. In the well, I had already had them. I, my kids was, when I started boxing, my kids were um, maybe seven and 10, maybe. Oh, okay. So when you I had finished boxing, when I guess when when I finished boxing, they was like in their my twenties. Oh god. So <laughs> what was that like? Were they, were they going to school like bragging like you mess with me, you know, I'm like, mama? They very humble. We also a humble Love family. It. But you know what? My daughter did because <laughs> something else. She said the kids was talking about you know some about the, uh, their parents or whatever, and she said, "I bet you can't Google your parents." But, and I bet she was right. Hey, yes. She said, oh, I can Google my mommy. Right. <laughs> and I, you know, and I'm sure that just for them was a, a wonderful example of uh, your journey was a wonderful example for them and inspiring and encouraging yes. for them, for them to be where they are in their respective lives and moving forward and being productive, you know, uh, citizens and, and embracing their respective journeys as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes. You know, I used to ask them, well, early, later in the years, I said, was I a bad parent? Because they didn't have play days. Oh. They didn't have that fun time. They didn't have sports. When they got off the bus, we had to go out to D.C. So that's maybe like um, the traffic, ridiculous yes. going to the gyms itself was yeah. crazy. So my kids didn't have that fun. So they had to do all their homework in the gym. In the gym. With either a fighter helping them with homework or, you know, they didn't have that fun time. Right. So, and they was like, no, mom, because you taught us way more. Yes. Than what these other kids know. Mm-hmm. And the experiences yeah. that they gained, you know, yes. with those other fighters and, you know, those words of wisdom that got probably got dropped in there yes, as well. So. They gained some valuable experiences. So we we have been a fighter and we have now transitioned for, and this is part of this juggling this journey called life. We, you know, we had a season where we are a fighter and we have transitioned from that to a motivational speaker. Can you tell us a bit about that transitional moment? Um, you know, I always wanted to get my story out because my story wasn't easy. It's, the, the journey was not easy but it was worth it. So mm-hmm. I need to let these young people, because they think everything is owed to them. I need to let them know, like, you have to work. This just need to get out. They need to know nothing is just going to be given to you. Mm-hmm. You have to work for this. So I need to, I, I wanted to go out and motivate everybody to let them know if you want it, you need to work for it. Pray about it, work for it. And work for it. Yes. And that's, a, that's a powerful message. That's a powerful message in itself for our young people in this microwave society. Yes, ma'am. That, that we are now living in. So tell us a bit, That that's the message that you're sharing on this tour that you're on. Tell us a bit about the tour. Oh, I'm on tour. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Believe in your dreams. Um, I cannot wait to just, I start the end of this month and I'm just so excited. But yes, it's going to mostly tell the people like, you have a champion in you. Mm -hmm. Like you just have to pull it out. 
You have to let him show, let it, let it be exposed. Everybody has a champion in them. And your past is not who you are. It's a past for a reason. Come out of it. Let it go. Better yourself all the time. Mm. So, yes, I'm there to step on some toes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And pray for it. Get it together after. And we're going to see a whole lot of new faces out here doing new things. Yeah. And, but, you know, I love what you said about the past being your past for a reason, because so many people get stuck yes. in their past and they're wearing their past in the present. Yes, ma'am. You know, or they're, they're, they're marinating in the woulda, shoulda, couldas. Yes, yes, yes. You know, but and not, you cannot ahead. stay there, you know, mm -hmm. and also like they say, oh, well, I was raised this way or I was born into this. Mm -hmm. It's a change. It's a word change for a reason. Yeah. Break those chains off. Just because you're there doesn't mean you have to stay there. Mm -hmm. Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Do something different. Yeah. So the next generation will be different. They can't say, oh, I was raised like this and I'm going to stay. So now their words are, oh, this was what I was born into, but this is what I am now. Mm -hmm. You know that, but... They just have to want it. You have to want change. You and, have to. And, and, and that's, that's the thing. thing. Yeah. I'm going to motivate them to want it. Mm -hmm. And, it, yeah. you know, it's a mindset. You know, you, you have, you know, we all have the present moment and what lies ahead of us. And we have the choice. Yes. As you said, are. to make those changes. Amen. Yes, you know, ma'am. To make those changes as we continue to move forward. So we transition, motivational speaker. At the time of this particular conversation, we're about to go on tour. And I'm, I'm sure as those who are viewing and listening, years down the road, there will be future tours that they'll be able to connect to as well. But in addition to all of that, nominated Hall of Fame, in addition to all of that, we have, we're beginning the journey of starting a podcast. So tell us how that, that journey is start, because I think it's important for the audience to hear, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of starting this process and this is what, you know, this is what it looks like. Yes, ma'am. Um, I believe it's 301 sports have a podcast and they was like, you know, I have, I had an interview with them and they was like, we would love for you to have a segment with us, please. So, and they was like, we need your energy. Like people need to hear you. <laughs> so I said, okay. You right. know, I, I went back and I talked to my publicist, Desiree Benson, which is the best out there. Yeah. And, <laughs> Shout out to Desiree. <laughs> yes. And she was like, well, you thank God. So I prayed on it. And I was like, bet. Yes, it's going to be fun. We're about to start this podcast. My main thing on it though, my main object is to, speak to all female athletes as mm. a, a, what I'm going to do. I want to speak to every athlete that's a female in different sports from basketball, soccer, lacrosse, boxing, football, all mm. the athletes that's females in different sports, because I need their story to be out. Mm -hmm. We don't have, we, we're not treated equally and it needs to change. And once it get out, it's going to change. Not saying that I will make the change, but you better believe I'm going to be part of it. You're going to be part of that change. You're going to have the impact. Your, your, journey, right. your journey in itself is going to have the impact because, you know, women are now, well, they always have been, but now more than ever engaging in sports more and more, crossing those lines in, into sports that traditionally they may not have necessarily participated in, sure. you know, women of color, you know, crossing those lines and, and participating in those sports that they, they traditionally have not participated in. And it speaks just to the general principle of engaging in something that you enjoy doing that perhaps hasn't been a traditional space for yes. your particular gender. We'll, we'll just kind of keep it, keep it general. Cause we, you know, we try to encourage everybody to keep it general. So sometimes you're that fish out of a bowl, but then a few years later, you, you, you know, you're, you're in a pool of people that are moving in that yes. same direction. Yes. But you know, a few years before you were fish out of a bowl. Yes. But you know, that's boxing. It's a day when I first started boxing, you believe I had to pay 
not get paid, but I had to pay on certain cards because I'm a female. Mm -hmm. They don't think females should be boxing. Right. Until you show them. Mm -hmm. But then everybody wants you on their card. But they have to understand, no, we love you kings out there. I love y'all. No disrespect to the men. Yes. But y'all have egos. Men have an ego. Females, we don't. You get us, you knock us down, we getting right back up and we giving you a show. We back in your face fighting. Mm -hmm. Men gonna run around, let the bell ring so they can recover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it I just like what mm -hmm. you saying, like I was a fish and now I'm in a pool. You yeah. know, because boxing was not for women. We're not for women. So about them brothers. <laughs> What they up to these days, and uh, how how do they interact with this sister? Love it. They love my brother, the one that was in the military. He retired now. Uh -huh. when I say loved it. He, he we did a um a thing of uh, interview. Uh -huh. and he bragged on me so much. I was bawling, crying. He was oh. so proud of me. He is so proud of me. And my other brothers, one is a professor at the college of Duke. He brags on me. He tells his kids, his the kids and his, his students about me all the time. And my other brother, he just crazy. He just loved me to death. <laughs> he just <laughs> his main thing, act up, watch I get my sister. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Currently on tour, many more tours to come. What do you hope to pull from these tours? You know, my main thing is to just help people. That's it. Yeah. Just to motivate people and get them going. That's it. I, it ain't nothing for me. <laughs> Juggling this journey called life. So share with the audience how they can stay connected with you. Okay, you can Google Tori Shonuff Nelson or just Tori Nelson and um, you'll see my website or you can go on my Facebook page as Tori Nelson or on my Instagram is Tori Shonuff. Show up, S H O N U F F R. You you know grammatically. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. And if you want to book me to come and motivate you, motivate your people, go to your venue. You can um, Google my publicist Desiree Benson at Desiree B B B at gmail dot com, or you Shout can out. you know just your yeah, email her or you know. That's right, that's, she read. She on Facebook. Get, get her, y'all. She ready. Shout out to Desiree. Tori, thank you so much for joining us, for encouraging, inspiring, and motivating us with your, you, with your journey of how you've been juggling this journey called life while walking in the gifts and talents that God has given you. So thank you so much for sharing your journey. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our journey. I know you all have been encouraged and inspired by this story. So all you little girls out there that are fighting your brothers, I'm just right here. You, you, you need to talk to this lady right here. <laughs> She'll help you out. <laughs> She'll help you out. But again, it's a testimony. It speaks to just, you know, the power of positive, what she was saying before about the mindset. And you got to want it. You got to work for it. It doesn't come easy. It's not microwave. You got to work for it. You got to have the patience, the determination, the focus, the mindset. You got to be a fighter in order to achieve those goals that you desire to achieve. So I, I, I hope that you have been blessed and encouraged by her story today. We thank her so much for joining us. Tori Shonup Nelson. Check her out, ladies and gentlemen. Check her out. We want to thank our underwriters for their support of my journey with Paula G. We would not be able to do this without each and every one of our underwriters to you, our viewers and our listeners. Thank you all so much for joining us. We can't do this without you as well. We cannot do this without you. So thank you so much. And I leave you as I always do with the greatest conversation that you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking to yourself? Is God a part of that conversation? And are you listening to his still small voice? Until next time, my brothers and sisters, embrace the journey.
one person at a time, one heartbeat at a time. When I look in the mirror, what I say to myself is, it was all worth it in the end. Oh, life ain't always what it seems to be. Sometimes it will get rough. Hold your head up high. Hold your head up high. And know which way to go. You better keep that smile. Look to the stars and know, oh, that it will be all right. It will be all right. Oh, oh, that it will be all right. It will be all right. Sometimes I ask myself. One question at a time. One person at a time. One person at a time.